Consumers demand more plastic-free alternatives and are frustrated by the slow pace of change. Plastic alternatives have started to enter the market, but recycling can still seem ineffective and quite confusing. In this episode of Telltale Stories, we interview Leela Dilks Hoffman, who's a senior research analyst at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. We discuss various things such as what is the issue with plastic and recycling? What are bio-based plastics anyway? What exciting innovations has she seen in her line of work? And what solutions does the circular economy offer? Here's a conversation with Leela. Hi, I'm Leela Dilks Hoffman. I'm a senior research analyst at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. I work in the innovation team there for the New Plastics Economy Initiative. So looking at all the innovations uh, that relate to reducing plastic waste and pollution. I came to this position after a PhD uh, in chemical engineering at the University of Queensland, where I realised that rather than just focusing on one specific solution, we really need to think about how we redesign the whole plastic system. So the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, uh, its mission is to accelerate the transition to a circular economy. So the first thing to understand is what a circular economy is. Um, and I find the easiest way to understand this is in contrast to the linear economy. And so that's what we operate in currently. So it's where we take materials out of the ground and energy, we uh, make them into products, and quite often then we just dispose of them. So it's a linear system where you're just taking materials and it's often ending up in landfill. Yes. So in contrast to that is the circular economy, mm. where from the start of a material's life cycle, we embed uh, thinking about how we're going to bring that material back into the system okay. so we can get maximum use from it. Mm. So at the moment, I would say our linear system, we're not actually capitalizing on and getting full value from the materials that we're using. Um, and that then uh, has negative economic um, outcomes, but also negative environmental outcomes in terms of waste and pollution. In terms of plastics, you know, we're producing 300 million tonnes a year at the moment, and that's predicted to grow or to triple by 2050 if wow. we just continue as we're going. Um, and we know that a majority of that actually then ends up in landfill. Um, only 14% worldwide is even collected for recycling. Um, and then only 2% of that actually makes it back into being recycled into new packaging. Um, and yeah, as you're saying, a lot of that that's even collected, it's low grade material. It's uh, lots of different types of plastics mixed mm -hmm. together. It's got lots of different colorants. So you can't actually get any sort of high value recycling from it. Okay. Um, and I guess the other big issue is that we've got 32% of the plastic packaging material escaping collection systems. Mm, so that's 32%? Ending. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and that's, that's sort of the shocking um, uh, number is that, yeah, 32% isn't even getting collected and a lot of that's ending up in the environment and then we know the negative environmental consequences of that. So I'd say as a material, plastic's actually really useful mm -hmm. um, and we need to recognise that. It's more the way that we're using plastic uh, that isn't appropriate. So as I was saying, it's the fact that we're not from the start of a packaging's life cycle um, thinking about uh, the design of it. Uh, so making sure that you've only got single types of materials, um, that you're not mixing lots of different plastics together, that then affects its ability to be recycled. It's the fact that we're only viewing it as a single-use disposable material rather than realising that um, you know, plastic's amazing for containing products, but can we then set it up so it's a reusable system mm -hmm. so we actually fill that container up 20 times before we then need to recycle it. So, as I'm saying, plastic is a useful material. It's the way we're using it uh, that isn't appropriate. Mm -hmm. And we need to be, uh, yeah, really thinking about reuse systems, designing for recycling. Right. So, you, are you seeing the future going more towards this sort of idea of cutting out waste entirely by it being biodegradable or edible, for instance? Um, I think we're going to see a whole mixture of solutions. So absolutely to solve this problem, we're going to need to think beyond recycling. Mm. And so that's moving towards what we call upstream innovation. Okay. And it's the role of design. So upstream is anything that happens before that product gets to okay. a consumer. So it's all about the design of the packaging and the product. It's about thinking, can we rethink the packaging or the product to eliminate the need for packaging? And then we can actually rethink the delivery model. And that's thinking about reuse systems. Yeah. Um, so 
I see the solution, as I was saying, lying in those upstream innovations, thinking about do we need the packaging, can we design it differently, and can we design reuse models so we're getting the maximum value from a piece of packaging before we're going through a recycling system. Dealing with plastics and innovation on a daily basis, I'm sure you're coming across uh, very cutting edge types of innovation. Um, what would you say has really caught your attention? Uh, so my favourite innovation at the moment is something called APEEL. What they do is they produce edible coatings, um, so plant-based coatings for fruit and vegetables. Yeah. Um, and these coatings are just made from plant-based products, so actually ground up other fruit and vegetable and organic materials. They take out of that the um, materials that stop uh, oxygen, um, so oxidation of the okay. fruit and vegetables and water loss. So it's just like applying a second skin mm. to the fruit and vegetables. That now provides the same function that packaging did in terms of uh, reducing food spoilage okay. and extending shelf life, but without the packaging. One company that we've talked quite a lot with is Notpla, and they've made little seaweed-based uh, pouches that you can either put water in or different uh, condiments. Yeah. Um, and so probably a really cool example was last year they partnered with the London Marathon and they were handing out these little seaweed-based capsules which you could just consume and it eliminated, I actually can't remember the number, but tens of thousands of water bottles. It, it's about piloting the, the system that you're setting up and just making it as easy as possible mm. to engage with. Um, a great example is uh, the Loop platform, um, which delivers uh, food products to your home. Mm -hmm. And so there you're still doing and interacting with it exactly the same as you did previously. You order your food online, it gets delivered to your house, you use it, and now you just put the box back out with all of the reusable containers inside it. So that's been a change that brings reusable packaging into the home but in a very easy and um, sort of low barrier way for a consumer to interact with. It's not all about a consumer's job to mm. make the changes we need mm. and, and we also believe that um, the people with the most sort of power and potential to make the change is business mm -hmm. and so we need them to make the business uh, the change mm. and offer the right uh, yeah. offer us the right types of options. Yeah. What advice do you have to mm. businesses? think beyond just recycling. I'd like them to focus on the innovation aspect. Okay. And it's, the not, it's not just trying to do a little bit less bad or see where you can get a little bit more efficiency or you use slightly less packaging. It's going, can we actually do this completely differently? Yeah. Um, and then we can end up with positive carbon outcomes and positive packaging outcomes and a whole new business model. Mm. There's actually a lot of innovative opportunities Maybe innovation costs something up front, yeah. but you actually have a business benefit then. Um, so yeah, we absolutely believe that there's a business benefit in actually rethinking how, how you sell your product. So moving to something that's more, um, that's kinder to the planet is mm -hmm. actually economically viable. Yes, and, and we believe that the, the whole circular economy is a, mm. um, an economic opportunity. Okay. Um, and especially when we start also looking at resource scarcity and um, yeah, the fact that if you're using the materials that you already have and that you've already invested in getting out of the ground, there's actually an economic benefit in that uh, versus continuing to need to extract new materials only to need to pay for waste management at the end. You know, the New Plastics Economy Initiative has set targets to 2025. We want to see tangible change by then, and we need to see huge scale up in the next five years. So we believe a lot of the really great ideas are there. A lot of them have been tested, and we've got ideas about how to implement them. Um, but over the next five years, yes, we're going to need to scale it so that can, any consumer anywhere can walk into their supermarket and actually see a difference. Yeah. Thank you for watching Telltale Stories. Subscribe to our channel to hear more from inspiring people at the forefront of business, culture and sustainability.